three minutes after ten is the time you're listening to James O'Brien on LBC. I, I am occasionally envious of the lazier end of this profession when you could point out that times like this that it probably would be cheaper to put people up in carriages than it would be at the moment to send them on mythical flights to Rwanda but these events are I think probably rather more serious than that kind of behavior allows. Uh, the Rwanda thing is, is bonkers. Uh, it is one of the maddest things I can remember reporting on, witnessing, uh, reading about in all the time that I've been doing this job. And remember, I was doing this job throughout Brexit. I, I was doing this job throughout all the promises about what Brexit would bring to British people. And I was doing this job when Boris Johnson was Prime Minister. And I was doing this job when Liz Truss was Prime Minister. I, I, I imagine some younger listeners find that impossible to believe. And I am currently doing this job while Rishi Sunak is Prime Minister, a man who has gone from uh, self-styled hero to absolute zero in record-breaking time. So I have observed some truly, truly mad moments during the years that I have been doing this job. Um, I don't think I was here for the Cones hotline, but I get quite nostalgic for the Cones hotline. Could you imagine living in a country where things were so placid and calm and stable that the Prime Minister thought to prioritise roadworks where no one appeared to be doing any work. This was, this was what animated John Major during his premiership so much that he introduced national, uh, a national scheme that would allow us to report roadworks where no one was doing any work. It was called the Cones Hotline. He was so animated by the sight of cones on motorways behind which no workers appeared to be toiling that he released he released a phone number that you could call and report. I don't know what happened if anyone... Did anyone ever pick up the... Did anyone ever ring it? But imagine being Prime Minister of a country that was in such comparative calm waters that a Prime Minister could prioritise unattended roadworks on British highways. Now, I get nostalgic for that. I don't think I was in the job back then. I can't have been, can I? Um, but this one's bonkers. The Rwanda stuff is bonkers. Imagine it went brilliantly and did all the things it was designed to do and all the things it said on the tin. It would not even come close to touching the sides of the scale of the purported problem it is supposed to solve. It is, it is so utterly detached from anything that remotely resembles reality that one wonders what the hell is going on in the minds of the people promoting it? And then you remember that they are politicians whose entire success now is built upon breaking things and promising to make life worse for other people. Now, I wish this wasn't true. I'm not a fan of simplistic analyses or even repetitive explanations. I, I, I mean, the reason I love my job so much is because we can explore so much territory together and we can veer off in unexpected directions and discover unexpected answers to what established questions and, and the idea that almost every act and, and tickle of the current administration can be described and explained and indeed understood under that simple and simplistic analysis is actually, it's bad for business, you know. What are we going to do? Everything can be explained by understanding that since certainly since Johnson got into Downing Street and possibly since Theresa May did, everything they've done has been defined by two things. Will it make life worse for, quotes, other people, end quotes, and will it allow us to break something upon a completely bogus promise that that will improve people's lives? Go on, think of anything. Think of a policy. And I'll show you how it either involves breaking something with a promise to improve people's lives or promising to make life worse for other people, but not you. Problem being, of course, it probably will end up being you. There is a, a particularly ridiculous, and I, listen, I know better than anyone how fierce the competition is for this title but but a genuine contender for the stupidest person on the daily telegraph comment pages and remember these are comment pages that contain nick timothy and um david frost regularly goes there the bloke that negotiated the oven ready brexit deal and then tried to disown it before the ink was even dry the daily telegraph comment pages regularly promote people who's oh Al Al alistair heath who edits the sunday telegraph he's the guy that called liz truss's budget the best he'd ever seen the best
rest of his lifetime. Absolutely. And they're all still in their jobs. I mean, is there another profession in the world where you could be so catastrophically and comedically awful without any uh, uh, comeback or any repercussion at all for your professional incompetence? I don't think there is. But, but there's one chap called Tim Stanley. You've probably not had the misfortune of encountering him, but he has started complaining already that he's got a friend. He has a friend who's in a blind panic because he's worried he won't be able to bring his partner into the country under James Clever Cleverly's immigration plans. That's incredible. Daily Telegraph has done more cheerleading for um, quasi-racist immigration policies than, well, I'd like to say than any other newspaper in the country, but that would involve forgetting the Daily Mail. And while many of us wish we could forget the Daily Mail, it's probably, on a day like today, important not to. So Daily Telegraph com co columnist suddenly realises that they do actually exist, these people against whom these nasty policies are directed and his friend is not going to be able to bring his partner to the country because they don't have a joint income of £38,700. It's almost as if somebody voted for the Leopards Eating Faces party without realising that the Leopards then might come and eat his own face. Don't worry, he'll be on the BBC in five minutes offering his opinions on everything from the situation in the Middle East right through to, I don't know, the price of eggs. But there it is. I mean, who are these policies designed to please? The Rwanda policy is stone-cold bonkers. Because even if it did the things that it isn't doing but they told you it would do, it wouldn't make the blindest bit of difference to anything. In fact, the closest you ever come to understanding the Rwanda policy is watching Suella Braverman have a sort of, have a sort of, one must choose one's words carefully at this moment because some people may be eating, uh, having a sort of, uh, a, a fit of, ex a spasm, a spasm of, of ecstasy while imagining a plane full of refugees taking off and flying to a country where very recently refugees were shot dead for protesting about their food rations. That is the sort of image, the sort of dream, the sort of vision that inspires the former Home Secretary into a spasm of ecstasy. In fact, she dreams about not even the plane taking off, but the Daily Telegraph front page. So you live in a country now where a former Home Secretary, a doubly disgraced Home Secretary, can have a spasm of euphoria and dream of the day when her favourite newspaper carries a front page detailing the deportation of refugees to a country where refugees get shot. And then a columnist in the same newspaper can have a fit of the vapours when he discovers that actually these horrible policies, they're going to affect people that I know as well. Well, that's not cricket. That's not what we signed up for. These policies are supposed to make other people's lives worse, not the lives of people that we know, not our lives. So you name the policy, I'll show you exactly where it either promises to break something, whether it's membership of the European Union or subscription to the European Convention on Human Rights or whatever, a membership of NATO. Some of them have started moaning and whining about now. They'll break stuff or they will promise to make other people's lives worse. 12 minutes after 10 is the time you are listening to James O'Brien on LBC, where we turn our attention now to a frankly extraordinary intervention from a, uh, a, a very, very beleaguered Prime Minister. NHS leaders and charities are already warning that the elderly and disabled will pay a heavy price for this crackdown on foreign care workers. The minimum salary needed to get a skilled worker visa to the UK is going up to £38,700. That's about 50%. And I, I can't quite comprehend why they're doing it. Care workers and NHS workers will get some exemptions from this, from the new higher threshold, because the NHS is in such desperate need, but they will no longer be allowed to bring their dependents. So the people coming to this country to look after us, to look after you and me, to look after our grannies, to look after our dads, to manage their medication and wipe their bottoms, they're not allowed to look after their own children. They're not allowed to look after their own partners. They can come here and look after us, but they can't look after their own families. They can't, they can't bring a family member with them. Um, the shortage occupation list is, is being re reformed. 
So they're just shortening the list. So here is a list of occupations where there are shortages. Well, how are we going to fix that? We need more people to come. No, 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 Tristram. We are going to take some of the occupations off the list. Oh, I see. Does that mean that they're no longer suffering from grave shortages? No, it doesn't. It just means we're taking them off the list. That's politics in Brexit Britain now. Here is a list of occupations where there are profound and serious shortages of staff. Here's the list of professions. Well, that's a political problem. We need to fill those roles. Well, no, we don't. We don't actually need to fill those roles. What we could do instead is simply take some of those professions off the list. And then there will be fewer vacancies in shortage professions. I, I, I don't want to be rude. But even if you fell for Brexit, surely you're not going to fall for this as well. So here's a shortage profession. Here is a, uh, a sector where there are measured shortages, a shortage occupation list. What are we going to do to it? Well, we're going to reduce the number of occupations on the list rather than fill the vacant. What's the best way? What is the best way of closing down a list of vacancies? What, what is the best way of, of filling vacancies? Well, you stop calling them vacancies or you take them off the shortage occupation list. Of a salary level for a family visa, which is separate to a work and student visa, is also rising to £38,700. And I, I'll tell you something else. If you're currently earning less than £38,700 and you've fallen for all the racist claptrap that's been fed to you since about 2015, you're about to become a second-class citizen in your, in your own country because everyone will know that that foreigner over there doing that particular type of job is actually earning more money and therefore paying more tax and therefore has a better right to utilities and public services than you have. I'm joking, by the way. I don't feel like that. But you do. That's how you make your judgments. That's how you've been groomed and, and gaslit into thinking about the world. So what are they doing? What, what are they actually doing? We have hundreds and thousands of vacancies in this country in all manner of sectors, and they are going to make it harder for employers to fill them. 0345 6060 973. Even if you believe that there are, quote, too many emigres, end quotes, in this country, and you acknowledge, oh, you don't mean those ones there, you don't mean James Cleverly's mum or Suella Braverman's parents or, 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 or your, you know, um, your, your friend from over there, don't mean that, no, 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 I mean the, you know, them, those, those ones there, those ones there, I mean them, yeah. So even if you think there are too many immigrants, how do you square the shortage occupation list? How do you square the job vacancies with the government's decision to turn off taps or to turn down the flow of humanity into the kind of roles that are currently empty? And also, do you know what else I'm interested in? Andrew in Durham has just prompted this. If you earn less than £38,700 a year, I'd love to know how you feel about this. Just genuinely how you feel about it. It may not be my first question of the morning, but I, I think it imposes a fairly unpleasant financial hierarchy. As if, as if a job that is paying less than £38,700 a year is somehow substandard or inferior. Um, Andrew Durham earns less than that. He earns 14 grand a year less than that. And he works for the government. And he asks, who is this incompetent idea aimed at pleasing? And I think, Andrew, I will take your question and run with it this morning. There you go. That's live radio for you. That dropped at 10.16, that text from Andrew, and it's now 10.17. Who is this incompetent idea aimed at pleasing? Who is supposed to be delighted by a decision designed to make it even harder for all manner of sectors, but let's say most obviously health and social care, um, although they'll be exempt from the higher threshold, they will no longer be allowed to bring their dependents. So you've made that job less attractive. Here is a job vacancy. Here is a candidate. Let's make the job vacancy even less attractive than it is already when we haven't filled. I mean, I could go on all day. I know what you're thinking. Please don't. But I could. I really could go on all day. Here is a job vacancy that we cannot fill. And today, Rishi Sunak and jo jo James Cleverly make that job even less attractive to someone thinking of coming from overseas to do it. 
Who is that supposed to please? 0345 6060 Here is a job vacancy that we cannot fill. Let's now make that job even less attractive to the only people on the planet currently considering the possibility of filling it. 03456060973. That would be health and social care. The other side of this is employers. You, and I don't care what sector you're in, you are currently trying to find staff and you have resorted to casting your net overseas. At the moment, you can pay those foreign staff, this is a Conservative Party post-Brexit policy, you can pay them 20 grand less, sorry, 20% less than the going rate for a British staff member. That's been taken away. Now you have to pay them. To get them to come here, you have to pay them £38,700 a year. What is going to happen to your business? Okay, there are two questions for you here. One, inspired by Andrew in Durham. Who is this idea designed to delight? Who is it aimed at pleasing? 03456060973. And number two, if you are an employer currently looking for staff, what is the increase to £38,700 minimum for a foreign worker, you can still pay peanuts to a British worker, what is that going to do to your business? And if you are a racist, I know you don't ring me anymore because, well, it's all gone a bit wrong, hasn't it, lads? But if you are a racist, how do you feel about the fact that you are being described effectively by this incredibly right-wing government as worth less money than a foreigner? Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. I'm not expecting many answers to the third question, but I want lots of answers to the first two. Who is this designed to please and how will it please them? And what's it gonna do to your business? Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Because unless I'm misunderstanding something fairly clear, fairly profound here, that there are two human beings, right? And one job. If you want to give it to the foreign person you're going to have to pay them twice as much as you'd have to pay the british person and that's supposed to delight racists i must be misunderstanding something somewhere anyway get stuck in do you want the number you know what happens if i don't give you the phone number same people ring in every day oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three i'd like to hear from people who've never phoned a radio station before who've never thought they'd ever dream of phoning a radio station before or of course from people who've phoned radio stations all the time but only if you've got something interesting to say who is this bizarre and unpleasant policy designed to delight and what's it going to do to your business it's 10 21. On LBC, call 0345 24 minutes after 10. I, I, I'm going to read you a little quote that's in my new book, which oddly uh, someone else has just tweeted, not in response to this radio program, but um, it, it, it's testimony from someone who used to work in the think tank environment, the secretly funded lobby groups masquerading as, as think tanks and being invited onto programs everywhere. And it's the sort of thing that he would hear uh, at get togethers. You ready for this? Publicly funded care workers aren't essential. If people are getting old, they should have worked harder when they were younger. Why should taxes pay for their laziness? Now, how close is that to the kind of stuff you hear on a regular basis, except it's directed at single mothers or, I don't know, pregnant women who can't give up cigarettes or uh, foreigners in general or immigrants or refugees in particular or unemployed people or people that can't afford to feed the families or, or people that have got hygiene poverty and can't afford shampoo. How often have you heard a, a variation of that little line there? Um, if people are getting old, they should have worked harder when they were younger. Why should taxes pay for their laziness? Because the problem with that kind of rhetoric is eventually it could be you. Simon's in Colston. What's going on with this policy, Simon? Right, well, I mean, as I'm listening to you, I'm trying to pay my mother's care home bill. This month, it will be £5,578.41p for one month. 
Uh, and if they uh, um, do this to care home workers and push up their salaries, I don't know what I'm going to do. You're all right. No, right, right, no stop, stop, money. stop, stop, relax. Because yeah. there are exemptions for care workers. The, the, the problem there right. is that they're no longer allowed to bring their dependents. So the people looking after your mum are going to be prevented from looking after their own family members, which I think may well make the make the job even less attractive than it is already and therefore there will be vacancies and perhaps in order to fill vacancies they will have to put wages up but that uh -huh. but, but but you're not currently today facing an even bigger hike than you're currently facing okay well that i stand corrected that's all right that's what i'm here for that's what i'm here for yeah. what about the idea that the people your mum depends on are having their life made worse by the government <laughs> Uh, well, I think it's pretty shabby. I mean, I think most of these people uh, do an awful lot um, and they do it well and with much more compassion and patience than I could muster in their position, um, even though I have quite good qualifications. Sure. Um, um, and uh, I think um, that they, yeah, they get a very rough deal. Um, and it's about to get a bit rougher. And that is apparently going to please a proportion of the population, although one wonders which portion it might be. I'll tell you something else. Thank you, Simon, and good luck with your mum. I can't imagine what it's like having to find that sort of sum of money every month with no sort of uh, uh, help or, or support. 10.27 is the time. If you earn, and, and I, I hope this isn't a clumsy question. If it is, then just tell me and I'll stop asking it. If you earn less than £38,700 a year, what message is this policy sending to you? So the government's position now is that if you don't have a job offer in place in excess of just shy of 40 grand, you're not welcome here if you're foreign. You're not welcome here if you're not earning £38,700. Now, if you're not foreign, or if you are already living here, and you're earning less than £38,700. I've got a couple of phone lines for you. I'm going to put a couple of people on pause, on hold, who are queuing up to answer the questions we've already asked. What message does this send to you on less than £38,700 a year? Because I, I, I haven't, I, I don't know, I haven't got a clue, but I'm very interested to know. That's Adrian in Durham prompting that question. Darren's in Yorkshire. Darren, what would you like to say? Hi, hi Hello. James. Um, thank you for having me on. I actually wanted to talk to you about this yesterday when it was announced. I was thinking, hoping that you'd ask these questions today. Well, here we are. Um, right. Uh, I operate a care home, been operating it for nearly 20 years. Uh, I'm in an area which is pretty much 97, 98% white right. population. Okay. 20 years ago, all my staff were white. And uh, and it's brilliant because... The you mean people, white British, I think. White British, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. sorry. That's all right. Uh, I'm not, not trying to be racist. No, no, I know you're not at all. I'm just... I'm just I, I yeah. go, cause I think 10 years ago, you probably would have had quite a lot of Eastern Europeans working for you, but 20 years ago, yeah, you would have... Yeah, yeah, there was some. There so, was some. Uh, was just, but generally, it's always been... Generally, you want the people you're looking after being looked after the pe with by the people that they're most familiar with, speak the same slang of language, yep. know the same kind of things, know the, know the same stories, know the same people, know the same families. In that the seems same reasonable. Area. That seems reasonable. Yeah, generally, that works really well. But I can't find them now. You know, 20 years later, when we put an ad out, more and more, more and more, more and more, uh, and the cost of living hasn't helped, COVID hasn't helped. The, a massive uh, uh, staff left the, left the care when COVID happened because they thought it's not for them. They're, they're, they're old. A lot of them are older now. Yeah. Um, they left it then. And then the next thing that happened is cost of living. They just can't afford to do a care job on minimum wage uh, so, and live so, in this so, country with families. But the people that you, you, you're getting in instead, who will be from... Are, are, coming, are coming from abroad more and more often. Uh, I mean, they're not. They're, they're, they're still able to do the job. We give them. Training but how can they afford to live here? If, I if, don't know. I right. don't know. They must not be able to have all the luxuries that people here maybe do have. Maybe what, they don't what have What do we mean TV. by luxuries? Maybe they don't have. I don't know. I don't know. Sky TV. Maybe they don't. And have, to the people who maybe, say maybe they maybe they travel by bus. Maybe they don't have cars. Maybe, I don't know. I, I, don't I mean, know. you they should know. know. If you're their boss, you should have an idea well, no, of the no, kind no, of life I mean, that they're why, leading. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying to you. Is these kind of things that that that's, they're, they're making it work that way. But if you were to say to them, if I was to say to you, now they can't even have their families across, yeah. then what, 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 what leads to consistency in care is the know. person that's happy and goes home and is happy with their family and has, has kind of a work-life balance. 
you know, not a person that comes here and is looking at a short term fix to 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 like stay in the country longer and, and can't even bring their family with them. So there's no silver lining here. It's, I mean, it is very hard to work out what it is designed to do. To, to to people listening to this who would just want to know why you don't pay higher wages anyway to get staff and if uh, the care is funded, the care is funded by the by the, by this. Uh, uh, care act which gets kicked into uh, longer all, all the way along so basically we're funded by councils uh, so you know we can only pay uh, what we get funded to pay uh, and and we're now caring for people in care which are actually five years ago ten years ago would have been nursing but they're now classed as just residential so we get even less money to care for people that have got more <coughs> problems than what you would have been classing as nursing so, before. Uh, where does, I mean, forgive me for putting this, you, so I'm not going to accuse you of driving a Lamborghini, but, but we do, I do read quite a lot about private equity and investment yes. funds owning I, care homes. I'm a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a private family that owns this home. Right. Uh, but yes, that's generally, if I was to tell you about the statistic of homes, more and more I've gone to private equity. Uh, you know, so there's uh, someone's creaming a lot of money off the top. I don't know what the quality them. of care is in those places. I don't know how they, uh, how how that works. Where well, I think the, also the book, the book has the asset in it, and then you can borrow money on the asset and uh, the, uh, the 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 you, you know uh, for the putative point in the future. Hello. Do you want to? Can you go to my dentist? Yep. No problem. Okay. Okie dokie. All right. Bye. See you later. Bye bye. Paid back to the lender, but in the meantime, the, the, the directors and the investors can take money out because of what the asset is worth. Um, Darren, thank you. Um, 10.32 is the time. Who, who is going to be pleased with this? I, I genuinely don't know because I keep reading and hearing this morning back, right wing backbenchers are delighted. Can someone explain why? Thomas Watts is here now with the headlines. James Cleverley has become the third Home Secretary in 18 months to hold asylum talks in Rwanda. He is due to meet ministers to sign a new asylum treaty with Kigali designed to unblock the policy in the courts. The Immigration Minister, Robert Jenrick, has told LBC that more British people will have to fill gaps in the care sector. Industry leaders have warned the government's latest migration reforms will worsen huge staff shortages. Thousands of service people are living in blocks with faulty boilers, mould and huge weights for repair. Exclusive figures seen by LBC show a third of military personnel are being housed in the lowest rated accommodation. LBC weather turning drier and brighter for most parts of England and Wales with some wintry shower for showers further north, a high of 9 degrees. James O'Brien on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. 10.36 is the time. A lot of you pointing out. I was just trying to put the man's mind at rest that although... Health and social care visas will be exempt from the new higher salary threshold. Obviously, the cost of care in care homes is likely to go up because staff are going to have to, or management and owners are going to have to pay more money to get the job done. Now, on one level, that's great. On another level, depending on what your politics are, it's it's not great. I mean, it's great that people get paid more until a Tory comes along to tell you, oh, no, we can't pay people more. That will drive inflation. But we're, we're lifting the cap on bankers' bonuses. That won't. Uh, but also, you know, how much profit are these people making? If they have to start paying more money to their staff, there comes a point where there's not much point being in that business in the first place. So it's never really straightforward, but it is clear that if you're already struggling to pay care home fees, if they go up, you will struggle even more. So who is this designed to delight? I'm trying to imagine, in fact, you can join me in this exercise, the mythical fan of this is someone who doesn't think that their own relatives will ever need care, or someone who is going to be is confident that however much it costs, they're going to be able to afford it, or someone too stupid to understand that two plus two equals four. Someone so boiled by bigotry and xenophobia that they think it is good news to see a reduction in numbers regardless of what it means. It's a bit like the statistical equivalent, something I only really understood during the Brexit conversations, of people who would rather be on a sinking ship saluting a bridge full only of English officers than be on, a, 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 on the finest in a part of the finest fleet ever to sail the seven seas with with an officer class and crews as diverse as those that were on the HMS Trafalgar. Look it up. 
that 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 is what it is. I don't care if my mum's not going to have care. I don't care if the numbers are going. There are too many, too many here, too many, too many. Enough is enough. Says James Cleverly, who often speaks movingly of his own mother coming here to train as a midwife. Enough is enough. But your own mum is not. I don't care. She should have worked harder when she was younger, and then she'd be able to afford to pay the new fees. So you never think that about your own mum. So it's, it's always other people's mums. You never think that about your own fam. Your own family. Anyway, I'm talking too much. Dan's in Bristol. This is a grim one, Dan. What's on your mind? Hi, James. Hello. So, um, yeah, I can't really um, speak on behalf of uh, caregivers. I just wanted to give my account for as an engineer. Yes. Um, so my uh, to my girlfriend, she's an immigrant, and uh, she's working in the engineering sector. Um, so she's gotten a uh, degree in aerospace engineering, and uh, come next year, she would have been working in the sector for four years. Now, right. her predicted pay rise by that point would be around 37000 So given the Conservatives' latest you know, uh, pay caps or pay, uh, pay conditions, by their definition, she wouldn't classify as a skilled worker. And, it's, it, and this, believe it or not, this is actually the second time now that she's had to go through this. So she had a job originally where uh, the, the, the previous cap for an aerospace engineer, now the minimum was 26,000, but for an aerospace engineer, it was actually a bit higher. I think it was around 20, 29,000. Okay. The company couldn't pay her that amount, and they actually even suggested her to marry me just so that they could continue to pay her what the, what they could afford. How romantic. She, I know, how romantic, <laughs> I know, yeah. And like, who, if, if you want to pay for them for the wedding ceremony, you go ahead. Go down on one knee and say, I've got a memo here from your boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I forgot about that 30 grand that's stashed down the back of the sofa. Yeah, sure. yeah but, but um, no, and so she, she has to then leave that job. Um, and now she's been lucky enough to get, get a new job that can pay her that new threshold. And now she's in another predicament where, where by next year she's going to have to come to her current employer and, tell, and say to them, sorry, 37 is not going to be enough. You're going to have to pay me now even more because of these 30, new... 38.7. Uh, how 30, often do you apply? How often does she apply for a skilled worker visa? How often do you have to renew it? So she's got a she's got one that's going to last for a year to expire so next all. year, basically. I I don't know, do you, and I don't know that you know either that this is going to apply retrospectively. No, yeah, no, absolutely, and it's. I it's, don't think it would. I can't imagine. A lot of people are messaging me who are, who are worried about this. We should probably get someone to look into it a little. This is another problem with policy that's made up simply to, 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 to light racists, is that no one ever mm -hmm. actually goes into the detail or thinks it through. And, and even the racists probably don't mean Brazilian engineers to be included on their list of people that they think, enough is enough. Enough Brazilian right. engineers coming here to engineer things. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I can't imagine they're going to start chucking people like your girlfriend out of the country. But then I remember that they made Suella Braverman Home Secretary twice and my confidence <laughs> my confidence dissipates slightly no no of course no you're absolutely right we're, and we're, we're, at the end of the day we're not we're not we're, we she's built a quite good repertoire at her work she's got a lot of good networks and her manager loves us so we're very we're very fortunate and we think that she, hopefully they could be achievable but there are many i mean i work with many immigrants as well in, in my in my job and i know yeah. it's going to be very difficult for them to argue that and it, at the end of the day it just led to a lot of difficult questions and and I've asked her many times, you know, what's keeping you in the UK at this point? Because yeah. it's just, you know, she missed her family. It's a bit of a leading home. question, that, then, isn't it? You're just, I mean, seriously, mate, you're sounding a bit needy. What's <laughs> keeping you here, darling, when everything is yeah. so awful? But, but you no. have, but me, me. No, but, and, and I've seen how it's affected her mental health. No, I've seen how right, much I'm she sorry. misses it. And, it, and it's like, and at the end of the day, she's like, she tells me, she's just like, I don't, she just feels every day she's trying to give it back as much as she can to this country. Cause she loves being here, but. Uh, the government, she just feels that we're in the government which just does not care about her needs at all, or just doesn't want her here. And it, it's just insane that, you know, you know, doctors, teachers, nurses, engineers, we, we need these, these, these immigrants who do these jobs, they're the, they're the pillars of this country, we need them. And it's just such a pathetic and, need. And this makes her fear, so I, the thing I find hardest to deal with, and I think it's probably even harder for you because you're in the middle of it. Is is and I've had it quite a lot recently with people coming to book signings and saying lovely things that that they mean as compliments, but they're actually quite double-edged because you sort of think, well, you shouldn't feel like that. You shouldn't feel that there's a radio show you can listen to that makes you feel welcome in this country where lots of other places or lots of other radio shows that you listen to make you feel unwelcome. And that this idea that people have to prove their worth and, oh, and then and, and then for your girlfriend, I think what you've just communicated very powerfully is it's as if she's doing the high jump and they keep raising the bar. 
No, yeah, precisely. That, no, that, that's literally the perfect analogy. No, they just... She, 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 we were really happy for the party night because finally all that's over. And relaxed now, a bit. Boom. Relaxed a yeah. bit. Breathe and, out. And I, I thought, I thought the, the, the news, when it was leaked from the news yesterday and I called her instantly and I was like, I, I can't believe we're gonna, we might have to do this again. I don't think it's, she will. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look into it. I'm, I'm 90% certain that it, that it will not be retrospectively applied, that you to, 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 to renew a visa will not demand a new threshold. It's simply new visas being issued. Because that's not even going to bring numbers down then, deporting people. I, I mean, it, I suppose it brings down the net migration number, but it doesn't bring down the number of people coming in. But I, I, I'm going to find the information I need to put your mind at rest. And, I, I, and in fact, anyone who's got it to hand can send it in as well. This isn't the BBC. Um, I haven't got the staff to, 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 to undertake side missions, but, um, but I'm, I'm fairly confident. Just as I'm always confident someone will pop up in Idiot's Corner. So Mike wrote this message and then he pressed send uh, and it's three lines long. And, and this is what he considers to be a valid contribution to this conversation. And I, 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 Mike's going straight into Idiot's Corner, but I want you to have a modicum of sympathy for somebody whose brain could have been so completely boiled that they've ended up in a place where they think this is a valid contribution to the conversation that we're having. Morning, James, he writes, how many single young men coming in on dinghies are going to want to work in a care home just asking? Thanks. Now, I can't quite conceive of circumstances in which that makes sense in the context of a conversation we're having about raising a threshold for people coming here to work in a variety of sectors where there are shortages or indeed in care homes where they will no longer be able to bring their dependents which I presume Mike is acknowledging at least by accident that single men coming here in dinghies aren't bringing their dependents with them and of course if they're applying for asylum Mike they're not allowed to work anywhere although they should be allowed to, because then they pay tax. So I'm glad you texted in, because you presumably represent, I don't know, a, a, a proportion of the population. But there is a level of bigoted stupidity that is unreachable. And, and it's important to remember that. What percentage of the population it is, I do not know. I think they're currently drawn to whatever Farage's old party is called now. But that, that level of bigoted stupidity is, is, is unreachable. But if the Tories are appealing exclusively to people like that, I suspect that they're wasting their time because the people they're appealing to will be too stupid to realise that they're the ones being appealed to. It's 10.46. 10 minutes to 11. I am a Conservative Cabinet Minister and I promise to make other people's lives worse. That's it. That's why they gave 30p Lee a job, isn't it? Although I think there are now 30 deputy chairmen of the Conservative Party, so the position has lost some of its uh, value in the marketplace. I am a Conservative Cabinet Minister and I promise to make other people's lives worse. It's such a horrible, horrible approach to politics because it is in many ways the opposite of promising to make your life better. It appeals to the very worst of you. It appeals to, to, to our basest, nastiest, meanest instincts. Not only, of course, does it enforce the myth that if you are unhappy with your lot, it's the fault of people who've got less, or the fault of people who are recently arrived, or the fault of people who aren't even here yet, but would like to be, rather than the fault of the people who accrue ever greater proportions of wealth into ever tinier pockets of the population. So, you know, basic equality, basic fairness, basic distribution. If you're an enemy of it, if you love the idea of almost Tudor levels of inequality, or medieval levels of inequality, because you're on the right side of it, then you love racism. You need it. It's why your newspapers put so much effort into turning their readers against immigration, in particular, and against emigres in general. Because, you know, the minute you stop getting angry about immigration is the minute you start asking why that bloke's got 10 houses and, and, uh, and moats. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Packs of beagles. I don't know. What do rich people spend their money on these days? Why has that bloke got all that stuff? Um, it's not through business acumen. That's different. People who are thriving through business acumen. We need. But people who are just sitting on huge pots of money and watching them grow ever, ever fatter, ever bigger, are probably more responsible for you having less money than you'd like than the window cleaner around the corner or the lorry driver up the road or the Brazilian engineer who is now worried about even staying in this country. 
So you, 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 you know that they're appealing to this grim impulse that we all have, you know, it's work to keep it tamped down. But eventually, when something's built on lies, the foundations begin to crumble. It doesn't matter whether it's a prime minister, like Boris Johnson, whose entire career was built on lies, and eventually they crumbled, um, or whether it's a policy, in this case, immigration legislation that is designed to address lies about immigration that Tories have been telling for 13 years. Because the other thing it does, if you're not a member of the plutocrat class, instead you're a member of the, of the governing class and you've absolutely fluffed up everything for a decade and a half, what better scapegoat could there be than foreigners? You can sort of bank on people being so infuriated and enraged by their own bigotry that they're even going to overlook the fact that you've been in charge for nearly a decade and a half, during which period of time immigration's gone through the roof. You've been persuaded that immigration is a bad thing and you're so boiled and bent by that fury that they've f fostered in you that you're going to forget the fact that the people now telling you that immigration is the source of all their problems are the people that have presided over exponential raises, rises in immigration, up to and including Brexit, which they sold you on the promise it would reduce immigration. I mean, how? I apologise for using the word stupid so much today, but cometh the hour, cometh the adjective. How stupid do you have to be? to let the people who sold you Brexit on a promise that it would reduce immigration, presided over 13 years of government during which immigration has risen exponentially, and continue to claim in public that immigration is a problem, while clearly recognising in private that it's an economic necessity, and now they no longer need to worry about economic necessities because they're not going to be in power this time next year, they can go all in on the culture war in the hope of minimising the damage that's going to be done to them at the ballot box next year by winning the votes of people who are too stupid to understand that what they support in private, they attack in public because it lets them off the hook for having fluffed up everything during 13 and a half years of government. I mean that. I genuinely mean that. How stupid do they have to be? How stupid do you have to be? I mean, how many people are as stupid as Mike? Morning, James. How many single young men coming in on dinghies are going to want to work in a care home? Just asking. Thanks. How many people are as stupid as Mike? 15 to 20 percent of the population? If you get half of them on side, then the Tories minimise the damage that's going to be done at the next election. It's all there, isn't it? Lee's in Belfast. Lee, what would you like to say? Hi, James. Um, thank you for having me on this morning. Um, uh, my, I, I'm a 24-year-old in Belfast. Um, I work as a recruiter, a uh, recruitment researcher. I earn about 26,000 a year. Uh, in 2020, I met my girlfriend, Sarah. She is a Malaysian. Um, we, we met while I was studying chemical engineering. She was studying law. We got together back in October 2020. We've been together three years now. In February, it was my plan to go to Malaysia because we're living apart now because we were living together when we were in Leeds. That's why I took up the job. That's when she finished her two degrees. Right. And um, basically, a university messed up her visa and she had to go home. Okay. In, in February, I was planning to go to go marry her, uh, to go and get, to go, sorry, to go and propose to her. Hang so on, does she, does she know this? She's had to because, oh, okay. because of the situation. And uh, basically, we, whenever, We've been talking about this for quite a while. I was I had this whole plan going on, and um, it was almost go over in February yeah. and then try and get her over in September because she wants she wants to live with me here. Want to live here? I mean, she wants to work. I want to work. We're both very young people wanting to get married, live together, and work in, in Northern Ireland. Yeah. I I don't know if you know what this or what what the sort of uh, this. But how different it is for what the cost of living in Northern Ireland compared to the rest of the UK, but it is much lower. And as a reflection of that, the salaries are so much lower here as well. And, yes, and yet the threshold is exactly the same. And yet the threshold is exactly. So you, you're, you're, you're just shy of the 26,200 that you would have needed. It's, it's, it's not even 26,200 because I'm a because because I'm a British citizen. Yeah. All I would need at the moment is 19, 19, 19 six. To bring us back, 18, 18, 6, forgive me, to bring, to, for, a, for a foreign national to join a British spouse in the UK, 18, 6, you'd need. So you yeah. cover that, and that's about to go up to 38,700. Which, 
I don't even, I, I, I was twice my age with twice the amount of experience I had in the, in the company and everything was going well. I don't even know how to leave that now. Mate, I'm so but, sorry. Well, this is, this is, this is, this is nightmare for you. That's, it's, I, I, it's, I, 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 I woke up and I said, no, my mom called my mom asked where I was and I said, I, I felt like my life's been destroyed. Oh, man. I, I, I spent last night, we went to see my grandfather and last night and he, and he was trying to talk to me and I spent the whole time just staring, just contemplating most, even the, the most darkest things. My, my head is not in the right place. I've had to take today off work. Come on. Yeah, well, I, I understand yeah. why because they've just, they've just literally set fire to your dreams. And so you would have gone out in February, mm -hmm. proposed to Sarah, brought her back, you'd set up home together in Belfast, or move in with your mum for a while while you found a flat to live in. We, uh, yeah, I'd have to find a place first, yeah, but we were looking, I was looking at places and then she'd be able to, I, I'd be able to work, she'd be able to work, and then we'd just... Spoken to her, well, that's the point, she would be able to work, but, but, not yeah. but not in a job that she'd have lined up in advance to get you yeah, over the threshold. Because we're 23, because we're 20, she's 23, I'm 24. Yeah, we're yeah, yeah. trying to find, trying to find any any job, like the, even trying to find a job full off that would that would have, that would support on the visa is hard enough. Never mind a position that's going to pay a, a person that young that much. It's basically impossible here. What are you going to do? Have you spoken to her? I've spoken to her, and I'm most likely the most likely outcome is I am going to have to leave the country. You're going to move to Malaysia. That's the most likely outcome, yeah. You've got an Irish passport, though, haven't you? I've got a British passport. I've, I'm, I'm not Irish. I have a British passport, but Irish passport. I could... I well, would get you the first thing you've got because... to do. Get yourself an Irish passport, because that opens up right. doors that are shut to people. Um, who knew exactly what they were voting for in 2016 and all the poor sods like me who got dragged into it with them. So get yourself an Irish passport. It's just, it opens up your options. You're entitled to one as a, as a proviso of the Good Friday Agreement. And then, and then, and then we're double checking. There's no way it's going to be retrospective. You could, you could, I mean, the problem is it's, I don't know, it's his spouse, isn't it? So he couldn't just, you can't just bring a girlfriend over. You'd have to be married already. I'm just thinking you might be able to nip under the wire before the, before the portcullis drops, do you see what I mean? I have a friend who, um, who went through a similar situation a few months back with um, her girlfriend from Canada, and they, their, their fiance visa for application took six months to come in. So if I were to do it today, I would be lucky if I got it by May, which is already when this is imposed, and we don't know if that would be, if I would be applying under the new rules because they've already just been announced. I don't know what to say to you, man. It's okay. It's, it's not okay. okay. It's not okay. I know, I know. It's okay, it's okay that you don't know what to say. It's, it's not okay. It's... And I have had a really... Just a really bad day. Of course you have. Of course you have. And it's, you've done absolutely nothing to deserve it. This is like the definition of unfairness. It really is. I want to say something reassuring. I, I, I'm going to sound like a 1980s... Um, new romantic pop pop star, Lee. I always say something like "love, love will come good in the end" or "love will conquer all," but that, that's that's not really very helpful in the current context. I'll tell you what. I promise I won't sing. That's the best I can. <laughs> that's, that's the best I can do for you at the moment. I promise I won't sing. But you will get through it. You will find a way. I promise you, you will. I promise you, you will, because you have to. Exactly. That's it. I just the whole I can do right now is just. just I'm still. I mean, I don't know if she's listening right now, but I'm still planning, like, you know, to go ahead with what I was planning for. It doesn't start what I want to do, but... It's just because big obstacles in your way to get together, to build, to start building your life together. Let me know how you go on. Keep in touch, Lee. Promise. I will do, James. Seriously. Yeah, if, if I find out anything in the detail as more emerges that, that might be of use or of help to you, then we'll, we'll get back in touch with you as well. Can we make sure we've got Lee's details on the, on the record? Ah, oh, man, come on. And we cross live now to James Cleverly. Enough is enough. On your radio, on Global Player, and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation, this is LBC. From 
from Global's newsroom, the immigration minister, Robert Jenrick, says more British people need to be encouraged to work in care homes. Social care leaders have warned the government's latest migration reforms will make existing staffing pressures far worse. They include a ban on overseas workers bringing partners or children into the UK. Mr Jenrick has told LBC the current system is not sustainable. When we created the, or my predecessors created the NHS and social care visa, it was never designed to be the long-term answer to staffing social care. It was designed as a way to alleviate some pressures as we were coming out of the pandemic. Very large numbers of people have come under that visa. Mr Jenrick says he is confident flights carrying asylum seekers will take off to Rwanda before the next election. The Home Secretary, James Cleverley, is in the Rwandan capital, Kigali, to sign a new treaty. Ministers hope it will overcome legal setbacks, including a Supreme Court ruling against their plans. Thousands of service people are living in blocks with faulty boilers, mould and long waits for repairs. Exclusive figures seen by LBC show a third of military personnel are being housed in the lowest rated accommodation. Labour says it's a shameful situation, but the MOD insists it's making improvements. Adult websites have been warned to ensure they have robust and accurate age verification checks. Draft guidance from Ofcom says users could be required to enter credit card or ID information to comply with the Online Safety Act. Checks could also be carried out with an AI-based face scan. Julie Dawson from an online age verification company has told LBC News it's effective technology. We publish white papers that specifically give this detail. Um, so for instance, if you're looking at somebody being over 18, um, we can assess that to 99.9% and 99.94 for females and males respectively. France's National Assembly has unanimously approved a bill to ban single-use vapes. It means disposable e-cigarettes are set to be outlawed by next September. The UK, Ireland and Germany are considering similar measures, with restrictions already in place in Australia and New Zealand. In the city a short time ago, the FTSE 100 was trading down 48 at 74.64. The pound buys 1 euro 16 and a dollar 26. LBC weather. Most places are bright Lightening up through the day with some wintry showers in northern parts of the UK, a high of 9 Celsius. From Global's newsroom for LBC, I'm Thomas Watt. I do want to hear from you as well if you are um, below this threshold but not a, uh, but not in need of a visa. So I, I, what message does this sound? I'm furious by the way, I'm 52% I'm I'm furious, 48% gutted for Lee. And, and what, what do you do now? Do you think, oh, they didn't mean you? Oh, my God, we're back to the I didn't mean you. Aren't we? If we could find a half-wit who, who likes James Cleverley's James Cleverly's new policy, and I don't think the curse of O'Brien has ever come true as quickly as it has in the case of Cleverly. I told you when I said vaguely warm work. I liked one thing that he did, right? He arrives at the home at the, at the foreign office and he says, I will praise people in public and I will punish them in private. And I think that's good leadership. Braverman and Patel and, and other people were, were, the, were the home home office, forgive me, were the opposite. Uh, they're terrible people. I've been proven bully in the case of Patel and uh, a, a double ministerial code breaker in the case of Bravo. And really grim, grim politicians. And cleverly turns up and says, I will punish you in private or I will tell you off in private and I will praise you in public. And that, I think, is good leadership. So I said a couple of warmish words about him and then, lo and behold, the curse of O'Brien kicks in, says something vaguely nice about a Tory and they turn out to be just as bad, if not worse, than the rest of them. And up pops cleverly with a policy designed to delight who? Let's find a half-wit that's delighted by it. Old Mike, who's still in Idiot's Corner. Mike loves it because it's something about dinghies. Blah, 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 blah. I love Nigel. Nonsense. So Mike loves it, right? But you didn't mean Lee, did you? Didn't mean a young engineer, I beg your pardon, a young recruitment researcher in Northern Ireland who's, who might have to move to Malaysia just to be with his partner, just to be with the woman he wants to marry. So what does this say to you, even if you're not looking to get married? You're not looking to bring a loved one here, but you're currently earning less than £38,700 a year. Because this bit of it, this bit of it is weird. It's an odd number. It's almost double. You want to come here to work? You've got to have a job in place that pays £38,700 a year or more. 
If you're an employer, what's that going to do to you? But if you're a member of the British workforce, whether well, I don't care where you were born. I'm weird like that. I care about the content of your character, not, not words on your passport or birth certificate. If you're part of the workforce in the United Kingdom currently, and you are earning less than £38,700 a year, do you know statistically you're more likely to be in the categories that James Cleverly is trying to appeal to? You are you are statistically more likely, and I don't mean this as an insult, this is just a, a, a accounting, you're, you're, you're more likely to be less educated and more poorly paid. That's a, that's a fact. And of course you're more likely to live in an area of low immigration. So the people most likely to be appealed to by this will, will be one of the following three, or two of the following three, or all three of the following three. Be low education, low income, living in an area of low immigration. But of course people with a high education and a high income living in an area of low immigration can also be groomed by the Daily Mail and the Daily Telegraph to think that foreigners are the gravest threat to their security. People with low education and, and, and low income living in areas of high immigration will also be more easily persuaded perhaps than some. But, but generally speaking, those are the three things. Low, in, they were low education, low income, area of low immigration. So you're more likely to be appealed to on this. So James Cleverly is saying to you, the foreigners are worth £38,700 a year, but you can carry on whistling on minimum wage. I don't know how that message lands. Maybe I'm missing something and it's not going to land in anything like a, an uncomfortable or a difficult way. But who the hell is this designed to please? 03456060973. Who is it designed to please? And how do they deal with someone like Lee? Or, or, or um, the other lad whose who's girlfriend is a Brazilian engineer. 03456060973. Ka Katia is an actor. Katia, what would you like to say? Um, I'm equally as livid as you. Uh, who's it supposed to be? Yes. I think especially people who don't want immigrants. Full stop. It's, I can't think it's anyone else. Yeah. But even the, the people, e even the people who shout loudest about how they don't want um, immigrants, mm -hmm. would say they didn't mean you. But I'm, I'm not an immigrant. No, not you, you. Not, not you, you. I mean, they say I didn't mean you. They say oh, I didn't mean those immigrants. I, I don't. Oh, that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well. So who did they mean? Who, who is the mythical, who is the putative target of this policy? So we can say it's someone coming here to work in a care home, bringing their husband or their wife. So they're, yeah. they're going to be hit hard by this. Who's going to be pleased by that? Ha, that bloke in a care home can't bring his wife anymore. Who's going to be pleased by that? Mike, he doesn't want the dinghies. I'm, I'm being, I'm receiving messages <laughs> suggesting that Mike's message might have been a sarcastic reference to something that Robert Jenner said earlier. In which case, I'm going to have to swap places with him and put myself in idiot's corner for the first time, for the first time ever. It's number, it's number nuts, isn't it? It's number, number nuts. It's people who see the number and think we've got to reduce it. I don't care what that means or what that involves. We must just reduce it, even if it means increasing shortages in areas of dire need. Absolutely, it's, it's going to. Oh God! I was when I heard the news yesterday, I was completely livid because the government's bringing out, as you would have heard, the the free hours for all the parents in yes. nurseries. Yes. Now we run a small chain of family-run nurseries, and just got on the visa licensing, and we've been finding the most amazing applicants. Right. We get them this far to be prepared. Yes. To be able to supply more childcare. But now they're closing the door. There's no staff, there's no staff in this country. We can wait a month to get one applicant. Then in today, the last few years, it's been, are you qualified? Yeah. Yes. Have you got a pulse? Yes. Okay, get hired. Yeah, well, that's not ideal. Is this not ideal? You want, you know, really quality people because the first five years of life are so important to future outcomes. And since we start this visa process, I've felt a new zest for life. I've been encountering people who actually want to work in childcare. Right. They have qualifications coming out of their ears. They're amazing. And now they're going to close the door. It's just bonkers. And What's going to happen part, to your business? What's, I mean, the best case scenario, not worse. It's just going to be stalled. And it's only going to be available for the richest of the rich. Because already it's extortionate to provide childcare. With less staff, you're going to have to cover all your overhead with a uh, shorter, uh, lower yeah, number yeah, yeah. of children. So you have to put your costs up. 
and then we get the blame. We're the bad guys. Of and everyone you are. thinks, you know, I'm sailing off into the sunset on my yacht when the honest truth is we actually earn less than most of our parents do, which we know for a fact because they're not entitled to thirty hours. And that's, and that, and that, so you had you had a brief flash of thinking things were going to get better, and now they're going to get me yeah. me measurably worse. Are you on the shortage occupation list? No. So recently, they they looked at it and they considered putting childcare on there, and they said no, we can't put them on the shortage occupation list because the government doesn't fund it properly. So can you imagine? Uh, well, I can actually, given who the government is and who it consists of. <laughs> but but to be clear, if, if you need, so you can't find anyone in this country, and if you wanted to hire someone from overseas, you'd have to pay them thirty. Eight thousand seven hundred pounds which is insane but actually again they're so cunning they're so cunning. they say it's thirty eight thousand but it's not technically because they base that on a 48 hour working week right so what it actually is is about 15 pounds 50 per hour which given the way the national minimum wage is going up nurse will, nurse will probably be on that in a couple of years I don't know how it ends. I don't. I, don't, I genuinely don't know how it ends, uh, and I don't think they do either. And that's why perhaps the added dimension of concern to the ones that were in place at ten o'clock this morning is that knowledge that they are now. I think, and I, I've been dismissive of this position because it flies in the face of everything that we know about politics and politicians. I think they probably are legislating for opposition and leaving Labour with bigger messes and, and, and bigger problems than they would have in a, in a normal civilised country where power was being handed by one elected government to another. I, I, I just, I, well, actually, speaking of that, there is no clear date on when this kicks in. So uh, uh, as an immigration here, lawyer here speaking to Lee um, directly, I can't ring in because I'm looking after a sick child at the moment, but if an application is submitted, the rules that apply when the application is submitted will be the relevant rules. So that means, A, there'll be no retrospective um, introduction of this. So what was the name of the lovely lad? Was he in Bristol the, 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 with the Brazilian girlfriend? Anyway, that's, I think, like I said, I was 99% certain that they won't do anything retrospectively. I think it gets marginally better than that. The rules that apply to you are the rules that were in place when your application was submitted. So if Lee cracks on with all his applications, it, it won't be the case that the guillotine sort of comes down in the middle of the application process. Uh, this, at least, is, is what our immigration lawyer says. The, the, immigration, the rules apply based on when an application is submitted. Therefore, if they launch an application ASAP, even if the rules change, the application has to be decided based on the rules in place at the time of the application. There is no official announcement yet on when the new rules will come into place. Well, I've seen April 2024 or somewhere, um, but you're right, no official announcement yet on when they will come into place. So let's try and keep this couple together, James. And if it's in the UK that they want to make their home, then let's help them make that happen. Um, absolutely, let's do that for Lee. But who was the fellow? I've forgotten the name of the fellow with the, with the Brazilian girlfriend. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Good news for both of you. In a way, or rather, we live in a country now where slightly less bad news than what we thought the news was a minute ago counts as good news. LBC. 19 minutes after 11 is the time you're listening to James O'Brien on LBC. Um, it, I mean, it is every way you look at it, it's, it's incredible because immigration is supposed to drive wages down, right? Because people come here and work for too little. It's not statistically supported except in a tiny number of sectors, including haulage actually, which is now seeing unprecedented closures of companies as a consequence of, of other elements of both inflation and, and Brexit, of course. So the new policy says you can only come here and work if you earn £38,700 a year, which is breaking up families, <laughs> both actual and, and potential, because you, you also in the care sector where vacancies currently run at about 150000 I, I don't know which bit is the most galling, really, or the most bonkers. Here, here is a sector with epic levels of vacancy, currently relying on overseas labour to fill whatever jobs it can fill against the backdrop of epic vacancies. And Rishi Sunak and James Cleverly have just made it an even less attractive job for overseas candidates, who we are telling you can look after our family, but you can't look after your own. That's horrible. Who the hell is that going to please? Who is that going to appeal to? And I, I don't care whether you answer this question or not. I'm going to keep ans asking it because I am interested in what it feels like today if you're on less than 38 
£1,700 a year, what it feels like to have suddenly arrived in a category as a member of the British workforce that a foreign-born worker is not allowed to be in. It's beneath them somehow, your wage. I wonder how that feels. Jack's in Northwich. Jack, what would you like to say? Morning, James. Hello, um, I'm glad you mentioned haulage, and I'm also glad that you mentioned uh, stupidity earlier because I'm a HGB driver by trade, and I think that this particular policy appeals to a certain type of red wall voter. Go on. Uh, and that red wall voter is the one that probably has more of a vocation, works in the trade, and earns quite a decent living above the 38 grand mark. So the likes of most HGV drivers, plumbers, bricklayers, etc., etc., etc. And the reason I say that is because yeah. when I, well, I actually started in as a truck driver just after the referendum, and I stuck out as a Remainer. A lot of people voted Brexit, and the main reason they did was because they were upset about how foreign drivers are keeping the wages down. Now, the problem you have is, and I'm going to sound like a snob saying this. No, don't worry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a, a lot of people that work as a truck driver don't tend to be, you know, degree educated. They don't tend to think about things like critical analysis. So when they see the situation as, OK, Johnny Foreign is bringing my wages down, they don't consider things like the cost of living crisis, inflation, etc., etc., etc. And those people who had those views also, to be honest, had typically, you know, conservative okay. immigration uh, views anyway. I, I, would, so, I, I, I would buy this analysis in, um, in, in, in many contexts, but your colleagues, your, I mean, fellow drivers, must know that, that the industry is completely different now from what it was like in 2017, 2018, and the, and, and the great driver shortage of 2021. If and, and, you know, I appreciate what you say about how closely people follow effects, but if you follow the trade media, the trade press, most recently, I think the grocer, um, there, are, there are reports that it could be coming back again warnings that the driver shortage issue is is far from over so are you sure that, I, I mean I, I do understand how much ground you cover when you say that the um well, oh i think he's dropped off the line we must get him back Wait, i understand how much ground is being covered when you talk about that but there are not enough qualified drivers to meet haulage demands at the moment so i don't i don't i don't quite follow how that I think I think I can almost see it, but I need Jack to explain it. We'll get Jack back up. Abdul's in Milton Keynes. Abdul, who's this appealing to? Um, yeah, so, uh, hey, uh, hey, man, how are you doing? I just, um, basically, I, I listened the other day to an eye-opening podcast, um, which is a Muslim podcast with, um, they invited Nick Griffin on from okay. the BMP. Um, and it was, um, I, you know, a lot of these politicians, I kind of feel that, they want to say one thing, but actually they hide behind little sound bites and things like that. Yeah. Um, but he was he was saying a lot of things there that um, that kind of made me realise what this kind of thing is appealing to. Um, the the government has no ability to control um, really immigration into this country. They can add on you know things to say. Oh, there's. Um, you know, uh, we're going to make sure they earn more money. We're going to make sure they don't bring over family, things like that there. But really what they're trying to do is basically um, uh, make it so it doesn't look like we've got loads of immigration coming into the country. So you can have immigration coming from, you know, white European countries and, you you know, you look around. You're yeah, but that, that, that caused that really. Brexit. That caused Brexit. Exactly. So they, they, these people exactly. weren't comfortable with that either. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I know. But basically, like, uh, from now, from what Jane, James Cleverly is talking about, basically the thing there at the moment is you, if you have immigration there from, um, from you know, South Asian uh, communities there, Muslim countries mainly, um, a lot of people they don't they don't want to come by themselves. They want to bring their families. Obviously, when they, when when we come over to the country, we basically 
we um, make it look like obviously immigration to the country from our from our clothes, from our from our skin color, from the from the uh, you know the businesses, all these kind of things that we have. And this is kind of what he's what he's targeting. It's kind of like okay, well if we if we decrease the amount of you know brown people coming into the country in effect, right. it makes it look like actually we're controlling immigration we're actually when they're not so you're talking about so no but i don't know because it's numbers mate this is designed to bring down measurable numbers it's a statistically motivated yeah. policy not not a socially motivated policy but that's why that's why i think is that they can't i don't think they can control numbers i think it's no, well, we're, at, we're, at, we're, at, we're at loggerheads then because they, categorically this is designed they've even announced the number that they want to bring it down by yeah, but I, I think that every single time Tory's talking about, you know, sorting numbers out. Yeah, I know, but we're talking about it. this time, and we're talking about a very specific and unprecedentedly stupid policy that is specifically designed to address the latest figures, that is specifically designed to bring down numbers. So I think your point stands in a sort of broader general sense, but it's not new. I mean, it's the caller I had, the infamous caller I had, who voted for Brexit because there were too many brown faces behind the till behind the tills in Tesco's. I don't think that is what this is doing. This is literally about numbers. It's not even about good immigrant, bad immigrant. It's about all people coming from overseas and the need to reduce it. Thank you, though. Back to Jack. Mate, there's huge shortages in, in, in your sector. There's huge shortages again. They're coming back round again in um, in haulage. So how, how does someone working in a sector where they desperately need staff welcome policies designed to make it harder to get staff? Well, you mentioned before, before I got cut off, that, yeah. you know, you read the grocer, you read facts, you read data, you absorb the Yeah, no, no, but, but I'm not a lorry driver, so that's how I find out about lorry driving. If I was a lorry driver, yeah. my boss would be telling me that he's struggling to fill vacancies, or she's struggling to fill vacancies. But, in all honesty, James, and again, I am going to sound like a snob, but all for right. the purpose of this debate, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I, okay, so what do you want? Fewer, for, fewer foreigners. I don't care about anything else. Yeah, honestly. Yeah, okay. It, yeah, it's fair because, enough. It's because so many of my colleagues, you know, they do come out with these opinions that I find ab personally absolutely abhorrent. You should retune, retune their radios and then put some super glue in the dial. That's what you need to do. <laughs> Honestly, mate, if I, if I were to mention your name, what? people think, oh, honestly, do you think, oh, so you're a are you? And it's like, no. And, you know, well, this, tell this, you what, that's crazy. One of the very rare unsigned <laughs> copies of the new book, Jack, they're, they're like heading his teeth at the moment. And so, I mean, we, we can laugh, but actually these people have driven British politics now for the best part of a decade. It's, it's kind of the, well, you see Farage, who gives the impression of being educated, is their hero. Farage and Griffin are like two karaoke singers, really, except one of them's good at singing. Same tune, same backing track, same microphone, but one can sing and one can't. They don't care about anything else. Here's a number, it's too high. Here's a politician promising to bring it down. I welcome that. That's what you're describing what happens when they can't get uh, uh when they can't but what happens when there's no staff at their mum's care home well yeah exactly and they'll also they'll, also, they'll, they'll probably know about how it costs several hundred pounds a week like one of your earlier calls yeah. said but they won't actually connect the dots because they don't understand how employment actually helps productivity and you know uh, reduces stagnation that sort of thing it's just in my mind, it's not their mindset. Their mindset is purely British jobs, British workers, don't care how we get to that goal. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know how many people are in that constituency. I don't think it's going to be, I don't think, because you started off saying Red Wall, I don't think it's going to be as big as that. I think that the the, the revulsion, uh, rightly or wrongly, today's not the day for discussing it, um, of Jeremy Corbyn was a, was the biggest measurable factor in that. So that's gone. And, and, you know, support for Brexit driven by a desire to see lower immigration, that's obviously a given. But, but this one, £38,700 to come and work here if you're foreign does that appeal to people who've just got a problem with immigration in general does it actually work they're going to pay them how much that could be one response couldn't it 
It could be, but also bear in mind, James, I work in Jonathan Bolsa's constituency. Oh, God. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, I mean, I know I sound awful. I'm doing the I, you, you, No, you're service, not. You're not. Because, no, it's only like me. I mean, you're not talking about idiots corner. We speak to people all the time who've been persuaded into positions that are actually damaging to their own interests and their own children's interests. And, and uh, you, you, I, I appreciate your generosity of spirit. But as you've pointed out yourself, it's often simply an absence of proper influence and proper information that pushes people into these positions and what you've ended up with now is a conservative party that actually feeds upon ignorance and that will always fall apart and i think this might be a sign of it falling apart rather than it being ramped up be fascinating to see what happens to the approval figures it really will jack thank you mate thanks for coming back on i always like it when when a trucker rings in and you can tell by the clicking of the in the of the warning lights in the background that they've pulled over to make a contribution which i always take as quite a compliment thomas watts is here now with the headlines the home secretary james cleverly is meeting officials in rwanda to sign a new asylum treaty the government says it will address concerns raised by the Supreme Court in its rejection of plans to send migrants to East Africa. The immigration ministers played down care industry concerns about the government's visa reforms. Robert Jenricks told the LBC the current rules are not a sustainable answer to long-term workforce pressures. Labour has promised to prioritise improving military accommodation if it wins the next election. Figures seen by LBC show more than 25,000 armed forces personnel are living in the lowest rated housing. LBC weather turning dry and brighter for most parts of England and Wales with some wintry showers further north a high of 9 degrees This is LBC It's 11.34 you're listening to James O'Brien on LBC This is just a bizarre policy and um you know, I, 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 we, we know more probably on this programme than anybody about uh, um that, that constituency of people the people who if you like, are utterly convinced that there are simply too many foreigners, too many foreign people coming here, regardless of detail or fact. And it, it was an arresting number, wasn't it? The, the, the latest figures for net migration, um, although half a million people a year are leaving the country at the moment, which I think Lee and Belfast call, uh, puts into rather sharp perspective as well. We've also got a huge problem I, I, and I say problem simply in a logistical sense, not a moral sense. We've also got a huge problem with demographics, with the population becoming older, and also older people uh, working less. It's another interesting story in the news today about how the lockdowns changed people's priorities. Now, when it gets written up from a banking point of view or an economic point of view, it's written up as a bad news story. People are working less. But actually, if you were thinking of it from an entirely personal perspective, it could just be a recalibration. Why, you know, why do I spend so much time doing a job I hate to buy things I don't need? You start recalibrating that, then you might dial down the hours that you're doing or you might change your working practices but that leaves holes in a workforce that need to be filled in a country where the birth rate isn't high enough to fill them therefore immigration is the only way in which you can do it and because of that demographic imbalance because it's top heavy with older members of the population being disproportionately represented in the population then and and, and it not being self-sustaining because of life expectancy because of changing working practices then your only option is to bring people in who are already adults to do jobs that no one else is doing. And that's been turned into a bad thing in a country that needs it more than almost any other. And that's why I have used the word bonkers several times today. Uh, Asif is in Glasgow. Asif, what would you like to say? Hi, James. First time caller, be gentle, please. Of course I will, mate. Of course <laughs> I will. Uh, listen, I'm not a politician, I'm not into politics or anything, but I just do not understand this policy at all. It's just, we've got, we've got restaurants, multiple restaurants in Glasgow, and without foreign skilled workers, we would not be open, our, our businesses would not have survived, or would not survive. In, in the last year, well, this year, we've got five skilled workers over from abroad, on the 26,000 salary, which is fine. But if we needed five skilled workers on the 38,000 salary, yeah. that would have been impossible for us. 
and we would not have survived. Right, well, this is you. I mean, here it is. I mean, right on the money. So you could afford to pay £26,200 a year to chefs, qualified chefs that can cook 100%. Indian food coming over here from India. You simply couldn't stretch to 38. So Impossible. it's a £12,500 times five. It's another 60 grand a year of, on your wage bill. Impossible. During COVID, we lost so many chefs and we had to decide which restaurant to open. We were just moving staff around. Yeah. So it was only in the last year since we've got the skilled workers over there, we're, we're set, we're established. All the restaurants are open, they're running fine. I mean, I would love to get British uh, workers or non-Asian Asian workers, but uh, going off subject, I mean, nobody wants to work. I mean, people only want to work 16 hours or, or such and such. And without skilled workers, our businesses just would not survive. So maybe then <laughs> that the, these people who... For, for various reasons, only want to work part time. I, I mean, are they going to be sort of whipped into the workplace? Because you don't want staff who don't want to be there, really. On the one hand, but but equally, uh, where is this? Where is the mythical army of humans that are going to fill the holes left by these policies? If you know any sense of maybe, I mean, yeah, but I, I will. Mean, <laughs> but well, I mean, a chef is a hard job. You know, sort of yeah, a hot cooker, ten hours, ten hours a day. Is, five days a week, I mean everyone works five days a week, two days off, but I mean it's, it's, a, it's in a, a very hard job, it's a demanding job as well, you're always on the go, you know, in t high intense, so I just, this is just madness. Well you've got to have to look after the ones you've got, but but also, what, what, what's going to happen, what's going to happen if someone, you know, if a restaurant up the road decides it has to stretch? to 38,700 and then your staff find out how much their mate up the road is on for doing exactly the same job. It puts you in a bit of a pickle. Oh yeah, of course it does. I mean, we, we, we try, we give bonuses and stuff, we give incentives and everything to people so they get, they'll, they'll get more money if we stay busy and everything. So everyone has, you know, we, we do pay them above the 26. Right. So, but, but to get them over initially, that's what you have to. That's what you have to commit to, and that's the offer you have to make. Can I run something by you? Completely yeah. off topic, completely different, yeah. completely random. So I was in a restaurant yesterday, right, and uh, it, it had an open kitchen, and the manageress comes over and she says, "Why have I got four staff in um, when it's so quiet?" And she sent someone home. Would that would that be a zero hour contract scenario? It is. Yeah, it would be. Yeah. Does that happen a lot? Well, do you know, sadly, it does. I mean, the, your your wages are your highest your highest outlay, so you have to save, if if possible, yeah. you have to save money. But not not to the point where somebody else is working two people's jobs. You have you have to balance. You have to balance. Well, but, but he's turned up that day thinking he's got a day's wage coming, and then he's sent home at, one, at half past one. Well, no, I would never. I would I would never do that. I would make them work a good shift. Then we close at ten, half ten, nine o'clock. You get an hour early. You could. Saying something will maybe okay. never, never seven o'clock, never six. Seven, I never maybe he was cocking off a bit earlier. I, mean, I just, I was just struck by it. I didn't want to make a fuss at the time in case I'd misunderstood what was going on. But you're looking at constant. I, uh, the problem I've got now is that when people were complaining about minimum wage legislation and saying they'd all go bust if they were forced to pay minimum wage, none of them did. So there is a there is a point at which employers can't sustain a business because of costs that are being foisted on them by. No. I would argue in this case by quite racist policies but but I can't take your word for it where that point is because you're probably going to draw it a little bit lower than than it actually is aren't you but the minimum wage going up a pound nearly a pound that's not going to help businesses either I mean, we, we have to uh, well, there it is. do that for, for us it could be a uh, five thousand pound a week extra uh, if you work out on the staff we've got two 200 staff in the company so I mean that could be like four grand extra a week I mean how are you going to how are you supposed to sustain that then, if we need to for thirty grand, what's the point of running a business? I, I, I mean, it's the size of the hit of the leap that's just so <laughs> incredible, isn't it? To go from twenty six point two to thirty eight point seven. I mean, that's just I said unbelievable. I said, oh, thirty maybe okay, you can stretch because shares are worth every penny. Because it's like I said, it's a, it's a demanding job. It's a very hard job. Who um, you, who do you think's cheering this? Just uh, just on a personal level, who do you think's going? Yes, great I'm, stuff. Love it. I'm not in, I'm not into politics. They're trying to appease whoever they're trying to appease. 
But for, for, for me personally, this is just horrendous. Is I hear you. And you are into politics. Everyone's <laughs> into politics, whether they yeah, realise it or not. Talking yeah. about minimum wage, mate, you're talking about politics. Talking about yeah. immigration policy, you're talking about it's politics. All politics yeah, it's all politics, so. Asif. It's all politics. I know, but listen, it's, it's, oh, well. if you've been doing it, it's really nice to speak to you. Likewise, likewise. I, 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 do you want to give the restaurants a mention? Mother India, Mother India's Cafe, the land is there, we've got a few in Glasgow there and we Edinburgh. Go. So. I shall look you up next time I'm, I'm in the area. I've, I've just been up there now, I missed out on that. 12, uh, 17 minutes to 12 at the time, 11.43. Uh, Anthony's in Preston. Anthony, what's going on? James, hello, thank you so much for having me. Big what an fan. extraordinary um, clear line. Yeah. It sounds as if you're in the room next door. Oh yeah, well if you look to your left, oh, no, I'm only joking, is. I'm not going <laughs> <in> here. Go on. <laughs> Um, this this policy yeah. it, it's obviously all, only appealing to a certain group of people. I think, in retrospect, uh, when a, when a dog's cornered, it starts to bark and it starts to bite. And I think this is what's happening with the the Tory party. This is a, a soundbite they can very clearly march right through to the next general election, saying we we said we bring down immigration and we brought down immigration. Well, won't, we won't policy. have the numbers by the yeah. time of the next election anyway, because the numbers <laughs> of the next election will be for this year. They'll be for twenty two, twenty three. Um, uh, any so so. I think that I wonder, and I never go near this kind of conspiracy theory normally, Anthony. But I think they're actually trying to scupper the country. What a little bit of uh, setting on fire, yeah. salt the earth before we go. Kind I think of thing. I think they're trying to make life harder for businesses as they leave office, and then they can blame the consequences on Labour while simultaneously keeping the immigration scaremongering afloat and alive. Could be quite a conspiracy. I know. Like you say, but at the moment, when when there's a lack of common sense in these policies, conspiracy is the only rational place to go. And what's the phrase? You know, no matter how uh, um, how crazy it sounds, if everything else has been um, exterminated, then the, the one the one solution that whatever left is left must, one. must be the <laughs> truth. But you're never going to get a um, lot of love for Mother India, by the way. Asif's restaurant coming in. A few people saying it's an absolutely brilliant restaurant. But if, if I mean, we can't work out who is designed to delight, except people who've just got a problem mm. with foreigners, and there's a word for that, of course. Although sadly, no treatment. Um, except they could prescribe this show, I suppose. Uh, so, it's, so, so what is it designed to do? It's designed to make it much, much harder for people who need staff to get staff from overseas. No one truly believes that. Uh, a huge workforce of currently indolent British people is suddenly going to take to the streets and start marching through the doors of restaurants like Asif's or, 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 or anything like that. Mm. So it makes everything worse without delivering a decline in numbers because the, te the, te the, 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 the stats won't drop in time for the rhetoric, for the electoral yeah, like, rhetoric. Yeah. They can just say, we're doing it, and label... W so, I, I mean, it is even the more you... T do this doesn't happen very often. It did two hours, nearly, <laughs> and it's got more bonkers as time has gone on, not less bonkers. The more you dig and peel away, the more bonkers it becomes, I assume. It, it is. Yeah. No, yeah, well, I... There that just go really on. To me. As you were dealing with your other callers, talk... Go on, sorry, go for it. No, you go for As you were talking about minimum wage, my own situation... Um, Oh, thank you. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yeah. You've got your radio uh, on in the background, Anthony. Uh, you, you are told not to do that, and it's not its not a yellow card offence, but I am already a bit late for this. 11.49 is the time, and you're listening to James O'Brien on LBC. Not, not really nailed it, have we? Apart from the, the, the kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, the people who voted for Brexit and thought Boris Johnson was brilliant, but even they're not queuing up, to be honest, in my inbox to say that they love this, these policies, which will make it much harder for care homes to recruit staff and much harder for uh, highly skilled workers earning 35 grand a year to, to come here. I'm pretty confident, although the um, Home Office has been able to confirm it one way or the other for certain, I remain pretty confident that this won't apply to visa renewals, but you know, Windrush. It's a government that has a, a, a long history of deporting people who've got every right to be here because they have introduced a hostile environment. And remember, the woman who introduced the hostile environment, albeit at the behest of, a, of an absolute flump called Nick Timothy, who inevitably now writes columns in the Daily Telegraph, um, she's now cast as the sort of decent, sensible one from the last four or five Tory Prime Ministers, Ther Theresa May. So they just keep an eye on it. But the um, but the question of who it actually is designed to delight, apart from uh, 
Tory backbenchers obsessed with the numbers, but not the actual. So if you stop seeing people as human and see them only as a number, this works. Immigration is too high. We must reduce it. OK, the numbers, right? But here is a care home. Here are the people. Doesn't matter. Numbers, numbers, numbers. That's number wang. Uh, earlier caller mentioned Nick Griffin. I thought you'd be amused to know. I mentioned this in my new book, which I haven't plugged much this week. What day is it? Tuesday. Oh, it's early doors. Anyway, How They Broke Britain, available in all good bookshops. Um, smash hit bestseller. The former leader of the British National Party wanted to move to Hungary. I, I don't know if you were aware of this. He wanted to become an immigrant. He quite liked the look of Viktor Orban's Hungary. Um, but he was declared persona non grata by the Hungarian government and issued with entry and residency bans. So I guess that's proof that you can control your borders within the European <laughs> Union. <laughs> ah, you're going to laugh. Martin's in Manchester. So where the English National Opera is about to move, Martin. Some breaking news for you there. I bet that'll go down well with your mates. What would you like to say? <laughs> Morning, James. Hello. Um, yeah, I was a, I wanted to call because my story is not too dissimilar to the earlier caller, Lee, yeah. who was uh, talking about his Malaysian girlfriend. Um, yes. So I, I moved overseas in 2001 for about 15 years and that's where I met my wife. Um, we moved back to the UK in 2016 and I was surprised at the amount of hoops and red tape we had yeah. to get through just in order to get my wife and daughter here. So the, under the original ruling it was you'd have to be working here under whatever the threshold was, I think it was 26,000 something at the time, for six months before your wife and daughter were even able to apply for a visa to come and be with you. Uh, now, bearing in mind I've not been in the UK for 15 years, I, the idea that I'd land here on day one and get a job straight away was, you know, uh, almost yeah, impossible. Sure. Um, so I spent about almost a year separated from my family. Um, when we actually got the official, the, the the first visa, my wife dropped to an knee. She was in tears, you know, yeah, because we were, yes. we were almost having to go to court. We had to get, um, you know, we had to, basically, it was a nightmare. The whole thing was frightening, so. And this was before, I mean, this is what a lot of people have missed out on, actually, that the, uh, the minimum income requirement has been in place for ages. It just hasn't been, uh, it in increased since about 2012. But the thing is, you can't have it both ways if you're a right-wing politician. You can't say that it's too easy to come here and too many people are coming here and then also explain that it's actually quite hard for, for most people, to, including British-born British citizens. You have, is you, when you keep say, saying, but not, not you, though, not yeah, those. No, it's I mean, not you, mate. It's back not back you. No, I, they don't mean you. They don't mean your wife. Well, I, I would see family members retweeting stuff. This was around Brexit. Yeah. I couldn't vote in the Brexit deal because I've, I've not been here long enough. Right. And they'd be posting stuff and I'd be saying, you, you do know that you're talking about my wife yeah. and your granddaughter. You yeah. know, that's yeah. who you're talking. Oh, no, no, we don't mean you. Bit of a clue there, Martin, as to who we're talking about there. <laughs> <laughs> well, he doesn't listen anyway, James, to be fair. <laughs> I don't know. But um, is, and, and, what did, and they'd literally give it. I don't, oh, no, I don't mean you. I mean the other ones. Exactly. exactly. The ones the in the Daily Mail. The other thing you haven't mentioned is the NHS surcharge that's attached to this as well. Yeah. That's gone up num numerous times. I think that's now around about a £1,000. And again, that, does, that policy does not make any sense because that policy, they say, was designed to stop tourist... Uh, yeah. What do you call health, health tourism? tourism which well, you can get a tourist visa, no problem, and you don't have to pay an NHS surcharge on that. It's only targeting the people who live here who have to apply for visas. And is that indefinite? Do, 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 do you have to pay that? Does your wife have to pay that for as long as she lives here? I'm not sure if she has to pay it because we you know, we're up for renewal in January, so right. I don't know if she um, if she has to pay it after another two and a half years after that. Right. Yeah. So I don't know yet. Uh, who, and, and, and with with respect. And, and I don't want to be indiscreet, but will the relative you mentioned a moment ago, will they welcome these announcements? Will they, will they join the dots? I, d I don't think they'll be aware of it until I mention it to them. Right. And even then, they won't connect the dots. They won't think much beyond that. They'll, you know, some of them will still continue to think, oh, yeah, it's good that they're doing something to deter these foreigners. And I'm thinking, well, you, you, you're not even thinking this through properly. Yeah. Think it through. Yeah, you know, engineers. Most, most, of them now, most of them now are old enough that they go and visiting relatives in care homes and things like that. That has been touched on before. Yes. But waiting times for the hospital appointments, this, that, and the other. And I'm going, you're not seeing it. You're not connecting the dots here, are you? Basically, when Brexit happened and everyone went, well, it's not, we're not welcome here anymore. Yeah. 
but those, you know, public services have dropped dramatically. And, you know, this is the craziest have... time to be doing. I mean, you can see that the, it is, it is that, I mean, there's one bit. You can see that having record high levels of immigration and record high levels of job vacancies, that's confusing because it means a lot of the people that are coming here are not coming here to do the jobs that need to be done. That is confusing. But the solution to that can't be to make it less attractive to come here. It just can't be the solution to filling the vacancies. It can be a solution to bringing down the numbers and making the vacancies worse. As your call earlier, Lee mentioned to what's it done to the, the mental health of his partner? What's yeah. it done to the mental health of my wife? You know, she's had to go to... We've not even breathed yet since we've moved back here. And only when she's gone through the 10-year visa process will we be able to have a little sigh of relief. Maybe. Who knows what else I... they're going to go in our way, you know? Yeah, but and, 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 and if this doesn't work... Well, well, if the Tories stay in power and this lot of policies doesn't work and Rwanda doesn't work, then they just seem to they seem to spread their useless net ever wider and, and cause more upset and stress to more and more people, despite not even addressing the, 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 the concerns of the racist mob that they seem dedicated to appeasing. Thank you, Martin. James is in Brighton. Last word on this, James. What would you like to say? Hi, hi. Yeah. Um, sorry, I'm a little bit nervous. It's only me. Um, yeah, it's only you. Uh, one time listener, of course. Thank um, you. Uh, first of all, thank you for just being a voice of reason in all these ridiculous times that we live in. Thank Basically, you. my my partner, she's from Malta. Uh, mm. She moved here about uh, last year, and we've been together for about 10 years, so long distance for most oh, of it. Yes. Um, we got engaged last month. Um, and Congratulations. She, <laughs> thank you. Um, she basically moved here to do a master's degree uh, at the Brighton University um, and she's passed that now so she's on a graduate route visa yeah um, so I don't really know what that position that leaves me in because my, my job I, I I work on a piece rate so like my base rate will be about 22 right but I can easily get to like 28 29 or whatever depending on, on what I do yeah but I don't really know what position this leaves us in like she, she works a job at a, a local shop but that's more or less, you know, do you know what I mean? It's but yes, of course I do. You need a joint income of 38,700. Yeah. 38, but I don't yeah, know what um, her graduate thing, I don't know what that changes. Or I, I, probably not a lot. I think there's a grace period after graduation, but I don't know if that applies to masters. Yeah, well, she's on the graduate route visa, so she's managed to get that sorted. So she, she's here. Yeah, like, so she's got colleague. two years, up to two years, without even having to get a job after the end of her course. That's, that's the graduate visa route. Yeah, but then the problem comes with, you know, how, how do you go from yeah. that to just suddenly, to, like, what it would combine would be, what, 19 or so between us? Uh, each rather, it, yeah. it's a bit... Yeah, 20, 20 each, give or take, plus the you know, uh, health surcharge, of course. And I really feel for, for the guy in, um, in Northern Ireland. Uh, you're, in a, you're in a similar situation, albeit it's a very similar situation, you're, you're yeah. together, and he's him and it, Lee and Sarah are not together at the moment. They're, they're thousands of miles apart. I, I wonder, James, whether or not they just there's two possibilities here. They didn't contemplate the situation that people like you and your fiance find yourselves in, or they did and just thought there's not enough of you to make any difference. But that leaves us wondering who's on the other side of the scales. Who, who are the people who love the fact that your life has been thrown into turmoil or that Lee's life, in his own words, has been ruined potentially, albeit, you know, the sooner you apply, the more likely you are to snick, snick, snuck under the current rules rather than the new ones whenever they come in. Who, who are the people That's celebrating it. this? Who are the That's people it, but it, it? What, what, what are my options? It's, you know, do we do we rush getting married and then just do it this way? or Because that sort of takes away the point, right? We just want to live our lives. Yeah. No, I, well, I mean, to, I mean, listen, if I was in my old-fashioned mode, I'd point out that you've been going out for 10 years. I don't know how much, how long a run-up you need, man, to... to uh, well, yeah, to be fair, nine of it was long distance, yes, to be fair. No, no, no I, yeah, exactly. And, and also, why should these weird external gallery-pleasing postures from pathetic politicians like Cleverly and Sunak have such a profound impact on your personal life? It's actually extraordinary. It's, it's mad, extraordinary. And, and that's just... Just hearing the words of your last call as well, it's like I know plenty of people who might think, oh, it's good, but then I speak to them and go, what about my situation? Yeah. Then what? <laughs> no, I don't mean you. And Malta, of course, exactly. was in the EU, so until 2020, exactly. you would have been, you could have been hopping like, from one place to the other to your heart's content. That was it. We got together before Brexit even happened, and oh. it's, it's just. 
I'm the last one. <laughs> yeah, well, you and me both, but I promise I'll keep you company if you keep me company. James, take care. I'm sorry for this. I'm sorry for all the unnecessary trauma that's been inflicted on the lives of people um, wh wherever you're from. Plenty of British people having their lives thrown into turmoil because they've had the audacity to fall in love with somebody born somewhere else. Gosh, just like Nigel Farage did. It's one minute after 12.